This is my Porsche 911, the 997 generation. This is the second version of the 997, also known as the 997.2. And I'm going to be telling you all about this car today and taking you for a ride. Launched around the world in 2004 as the Porsche 997 and then relaunched with styling and mechanical improvements and modifications in 2009 as the 997.2, this generation of Porsche is one of the most beloved of them all. The last 911 to be made by Porsche before it was bought by the VW Group and a critical and commercial success amongst motoring journalists and fans alike. Many would argue that this is one of the most balanced and perfect 911s ever made and I would struggle to disagree. I'm a huge fan of 911s and particularly the 997 generation and I've been fortunate enough to own a bunch of 997s over the years, a few dot .1s, a few dot .2s and the last Porsche 997 I had was a dot .1, it was a Porsche Carrera 4S and it was a fantastic car, it was manual and I really enjoyed driving a manual car, I enjoyed rowing through the gears, it was a very involving and enjoyable way to drive a car. However, as my work circumstances changed, I found that I needed to be doing more commuting every day. And I was finding myself in city traffic and city traffic is not fun with a manual car. So I wanted to get into a PDK. And the only way of getting into the PDK was to actually get yourself into the dot two generation, which was the generation when the PDK was introduced. So the driving dynamics of this car are fantastic. The size of it, means that it still feels like a sports car and for many purists this is the sweet spot in terms of size and feeling of the 911 bearing in mind it's now coming up to 15 years of age and this year it's a certified porsche classic car it still feels modern it has the characteristics of something fun to drive you find yourself comfortable in any road in any situation it corners beautifully and because it's naturally aspirated, you get to enjoy all the drama of accelerating and feeling those gears change and the revs light up. It is really exhilarating and there's nothing quite like it. It's nothing like the 911s of old that could be dangerous, the quote unquote widow makers, the 997 generation and even the 996 was where Porsche really refined their formula and got their balance right. And I think there's a fantastic sweet spot in the 911 range. If you want something classic looking, but still quite modern, it's also a great price range. The dot ones can be picked up at quite a decent price for what they are, specifically because people are afraid of the potential engine failures in those cars, which I think are not as bad as what people think they are. Having owned a couple of dot ones, my advice is if you get them checked out, and do your proper homework before buying one. You should be able to find a decent dot one for a decent price and it'll make you very happy. Now the dot twos have the DFI direct fuel injected engines. They are more reliable and therefore they are much more popular and rarer to find. These cars hold their value really, really well. I believe they're at the bottom of their depreciation curve now and I think they're just gonna start growing in value. That makes this car a great investment the kind of car that you're not going to have to worry about losing money over the years and if you enjoy it it's a great investment anyway but if after a number of years you want to sell it and you lose very little money or even make some money then that's even better.
Now I've never really had a PSC option on the 997.2 before so I was quite excited to have it. However I must admit I was a little bit disappointed with the sound of it. It didn't sound as good as I thought it would and I started to go around the forums and realised that this is a bit of a common thing. It's something to do with the DFI engine as well and this generation of Porsche. Interestingly the Dot one did sound a little bit better. So to remedy this I wanted to get an option that didn't require anything major, nothing too expensive, nothing that was an overhaul of the exhaust system or anything like that. I wanted to do something that was reversible and something that was subtle. I'm not after a garish exhaust, I just want a little bit more of a soulful sound, something a little bit more characterful. And what I ended up finding out on the forums was removing the mufflers actually improves the sound markedly. And I had the mufflers removed and I had cross pipes installed. This then gave me a much more characterful and enjoyable sound from the car, which I'm really happy about. So with the PSC deactivated, the car is still subtle and not too loud. But when I activate the PSC now, I'm able to get a lot more character and a lot more sound from the car, which is what you're after really. You want this car to sound the way it should sound. I don't want anything too garish. I wanted something that just gave the car its character back, which I think this upgrade did. Like most cars of this age, the technology in here is extremely dated, the maps and sat nav is terrible and I was able to get an Apple CarPlay upgrade, a third party Apple CarPlay upgrade. Although Porsche is starting to introduce official Porsche CarPlay upgrades now, they don't actually have one for the Dot 2 generation 997, they do for the Dot 1 interestingly. And uh, I was able to get one made by a company called NM Auto and it's a fantastic upgrade, it's subtle. It goes into the back of the PCM so you can't see it. It keeps the OEM look. It's completely reversible and means that you can also use the PCM in its original format as well if you like that. It just gives you some more options and it's not uncommon for Porsche owners to not be keen on non-OEM upgrades or non-factory upgrades. So it's good when you can do a, an upgrade that's reversible or subtle and it doesn't take away from the OEM look of the car. So believe it or not this car is a practical car. I've always found the 911s to be the practical sports car. Some call it the thinking man sports car. For me I call it the family sports car. The back seats are great. I'm able to get my two children in there. I have two children who are um, below the age of 10. One sits in a child seat which works really well and the other sits in a booster cushion which also works really well for them. Now one of the key things about the 911 is those back seats are a little bit bucketed so you have to find a child seat that fits that correctly. But once you find the right car seat and booster seat it's great to have the kids in the back and they really enjoy it. For me cars are my passion so to share it with my family is really important to me. I love to have them in the car with me when I'm driving places and they love to be with me too so just enjoying and sharing those passions with my family is really important and the 911 allows me to do that more than any other sports car I've ever owned before. The car is practical, being a rear-engined car, the boot and luggage storage is at the front of the car. You can get your weekly groceries in there, you can get camera equipment in there, you can get bits and bobs. You're not going to fit any IKEA boxes that's for sure but you can certainly get weekend bags away for a nice weekend trip and I've, I've packed it to its brim. I've learned the art of packing a 911 frunk. There is an art to it, and it is amazing how much you can get in there. I even went to the Goodwood Festival of Speed, and I was able to carry not just one, but two buggies and a picnic. So anything's possible when you want to make it happen. Of course, the back seats aren't great for adults. For small journeys, it's possible, but it's great for kids. I'd say below the age of 12. I won't talk too much about fuel economy because if you're in the market for a sports car, looking at fuel economy is a waste of time. Sports cars drink a lot of fuel, that's just the way it is and you have to accept that. Every time I get into the 911, it's always a special experience. Everything just feels like an occasion, everything just feels like an event. The seats are very comfortable in this car, they're very supportive and visibility is fantastic all around. The reliability of this car is phenomenal. In all the 911s and 997s I've had, I've had very few issues. They really are built to last. And you know that by the fact that you see so many of these cars out on the road. 
In fact, one of the reasons why 911s and Porsches are so special is because you can still buy Porsche 911s that are over 30 years old. You can still get parts for them. You can still get lots of support and service. There are plenty of Porsche specialists dotted around and the forums are fantastic. Most of your questions can be answered on a 911 forum, a Porsche forum. And then of course, you've got the Porsche culture, the car culture, the car meets, the car clubs. And it's a phenomenal thing to be part of a car community as welcoming and as passionate as the Porsche car community. I've attended many car meets with my family. They've always been a great day out. And I just love seeing other people's 911s. Everybody's 911s are individual. They all have their own character and characteristics. And that's something I've mentioned before in one of my previous 911 videos, is that people do have qualms with each generation of the 911. For example, people were frustrated by the size of the 991. They were frustrated by the electric steering and the move away from hydraulic steering. People think the 992 generation are even bigger. In fact, people obviously had their issues from the switch from air cooling to water cooling. However, what I think is fantastic about the 911 is because of their stance and taking an evolutionary development of this car rather than a revolutionary one, the car just moves along a little bit each generation. It's just a little bit different, meaning that you can get the Porsche that makes you happy, the Porsche that has the features and the qualities that you like. If you like them smaller, go for the 997s or before. If you like them larger, go for the ones that came after. If you like hydraulic steering, if you like the electric steering, the naturally aspirated engines, the turbo engines, it's all there. There's a Porsche for everyone. And for me, someone who has the Porsche as a family daily driver that still gets all of the benefits of a sports car as well, I love that. That's the sweet spot of car for me. I want my car to be usable. I want it to be something I can share with the people I love. And I want it to be something that's still gonna get my blood and heart pumping and put a smile on my face. This car is very easy to drive. It's comfortable. It's easy to drive around town. I've never taken it to track, but of course, it's bred for the track. I've done motorway miles, I've done V roads, and I've done the trip to the grocery stores. And each and every trip is comfortable and enjoyable. This car's even great in the motorway. I have cruise control in this car. You stick on cruise control, and it's a comfortable cruiser. Every owner of these cars takes care of them and knows the responsibility they have in owning one. Often you're put off by buying cars with a lot of previous owners, but really I've never had a problem buying Porsches with a lot of previous owners because I know as long as you can see from the records that they've been looked after, very few people would own a Porsche 911 and not take maximum care of it. I'm always grateful to God to have given me the means to have driven and owned cars like this. And I hope I can have the privilege to keep owning 911s into my old age. I'd love to retire as an old man driving around in an old 911, passing my time. That sounds good to me. So what can I say? I highly recommend the Porsche 997.1 or .2 to anybody who loves sports cars, who love Porsches, who've dreamt about getting into a 911. This is the perfect 911 to start with, I would say. It's the sweet spot between something old and classic and something modern and fresh. And it just sits perfectly in between the generations of Porsches. And I think it's a great car for anybody to start their 911 journey with. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. I had a lot of fun making it. I do love cars and I do love tech. So you will see a mixture of that on my channel. And I will be getting back to some tech videos too soon and some Porsche videos in the future as well. So until next time, see ya. Peace.